In today's video, we're going to look at the spline editor and some of the things that we can do with the spline editor. I'm on the edit page to start with, so I need to come into the effects panel and get a fusion composition and drag that down to the timeline. Once we've got our fusion composition, I need to have the playhead touching it or over it and we'll select it. And then I can open in the fusion page. Once in the fusion page, we'll see we've got our media out. So we're just going to set up a ball so we can animate it and show you the spline editor. I'll bring in a background node, connect the background node to the media out. With the background node selected, I can come into the toolbar and at the ellipse, I can just click the ellipse and that will connect it up, giving us a circle. Let's make this a bit smaller. Because I'm going to animate this, in fact, I'm going to change the color first. So let's change the color. And because I'm going to animate it with the background highlighted, I can just come up to transform, select transform. And that'll attach the transform. So now we've got our ball in the viewer. We're going to animate it and use the spline editor. First of all, I'm going to take the playhead to zero. And then I'm going to take a ball to the top of the screen. Once I'm there, inside the inspector, I'm going to select keyframe. This also activates auto keyframing. So now when I move the playhead and the position of the ball, it will set another keyframe. We're going to come to about 75 with the playhead and move the ball down here. And it's automatically set a keyframe. If we play this animation, then this is linear. The ball stays at the same speed from top to bottom. And this is where we could use the spline editor to make some nice smooth curves. Now this is different than the anim curves. Anim curves do this automatically for you. You can see anim curves inside the spline editor, but you can't change them. We're going to start and have a look at the spline editor window. So we just come up to spline and it opens the editor down at the bottom. To make some more room, we can close the inspector or we can make the inspector half the height. So then we get some more room down here. At the left, we can click and drag to change the width of the spline editor, or we can also select the spline editor and press F4. That gives us the full width, and we can lift this up a little bit. Now in the spline editor over on the left, we've got our nodes, our controls, and our curve. So if we select the transform, we can see that we've got the transform is the node, center is the controls, and displace is the type of curve that we've got, which just goes from zero to one. And it's incorporating both the X and Y, and we'll show you how to split that shortly. We can change the color of our path here. So we can uh, change color, and we can select a different color for our path if we want to identify them. Looking inside the actual graph area, then this here, this is a keyframe, and down here is another keyframe. You'll notice it's got the lock icon, and this is because it's a displacement. We can move these in time, so we can move them left and right, but we can't move them up or down because it's a displacement, and that's why you would split them into an X and Y path. When you select a keyframe, it activates its handle, and then you can use the handle to put in a nice curve. When we look at our animation, it'll slow down as it gets near the end. It's a more natural animation, so you do get lots of control with the curve here. A little tip is if you hold down the Alt key, then it will lock it horizontally. So now I can just go out horizontally and set my curve. So come down here and we can set a curve here. We've got different acceleration here and we can just tidy up the animation. In the top right of our spline editor, we've got the zoom vertical. And we've also got the zoom horizontal. Holding down the control and using your scroll wheel, we'll also zoom in and zoom out. We can come on to the time ruler and we can click our mouse and drag. And we can come here on the position. And again, we can click our mouse and drag. So we've got control here of the spline. It's really simple. Next to our zoom controls, we've got zoom to fit. We select this, it will bring our keyframes to the maximum size where we can still see them. And this is useful if you've selected a group of keyframes and you want to work on those specific keyframes. Next one I find really useful, we can select this and then draw a rectangle around a group of keyframes or a keyframe and it will zoom into that area 
giving you some fine detail. Next to this, we've got a three button menu, which has got loads of really useful controls in, particularly if you've got a busy node tree with lots of keyframes. In here, you can select one node and just see what keyframes are in that node. We can switch the view on and off. The create and edit filters is very powerful. So we can just look at certain, for example, if we had size as a keyframe on lots of different nodes, we can just look at all the size keyframes so we can set fil filters. The collapse controls, if you look at the left, when I select that, we'll collapse them and expand, we'll expand them. So that helps with organization. And we've got some other controls in there. At the bottom, we've got our shortcuts. And I'm just gonna come to this one, which is select all. That will activate some of the others here. We can use the shortcut for smoothing, so that will smooth out uh, keyframes. We've also make it linear, which is where we started. Invert, because we've only got a displacement path, we won't have invert. If we had X and Y, then we could invert them. Step in and step out. These are really useful if you want a continuous keyframe and then a sudden change. This is really useful for the follower node in the text plus. We then have reverse. Of course, if we just press this, then our animation will now be in reverse. We can reverse animation really easily. We have set loop, set ping pong, and set relative. These are very, very powerful. And we could also determine how long they last. We then have the select all append. So we can add keyframes. The time stretcher, so we can select this and back into view. And we can change the time. This is very similar to the keyframes editor where you can change the time, but you can also do it on here. We've then got the shape box. We're gonna look at that shortly. And we've got the show key markers. By selecting this, it's going to put a little marker in our timeline so we can identify where the keyframe pairs are. I'm going to show you how to split these. What we can do is highlight one and we can come into the viewer in the middle of our little ball. Right click, come down to polyline and then we've got convert to XY path. We don't need an offset, so we select this. And now we've got an X and a Y path for our ball, that gives us a lot more control. We can also do this originally. And if I go back, I'm going to come up to the center and double click. So we've no keyframes anymore. For some reason my computer shut down then. Windows, don't you love it? What I'm gonna do now is I've double clicked on the center. So we've got rid of the keyframes, we're back to the beginning. I'm gonna take the playhead to zero, we'll bring ball down here. I'm then gonna to come to the center again, but this time I'm gonna right click Modify with XY path. And we're going to modify, as we can see, we've got XY keyframed here. I'm going to come to about 75 frames on the time ruler and bring the ball over this side. So now we've got the ball going across the bottom. What I'll do is zoom to fit so we can see the keyframes in here. With the X path, I'm just going to select this once. What it does is deactivate the X so we can't change it, but we can still see it. So it's still visible on the screen, but we have we can't interact with it. On the Y axis, I'm going to come to about frame 10. I'm going to right click and come up to set key, which is control and K as a keyboard shortcut. You'll notice in this context menu, there's lots of keyboard shortcuts. And what that will do is set a keyframe, the same value as the keyframe prior to it. About frame five, I'm going to click in the middle here and just drag up to about 0.8 and then with it highlighted I'm going to set that as a curve so we get a nice bell curve and that's going to be our bounce that we have there so that's our first bounce and then going to highlight the bell curve that we've got here I'm going to right click on any of the keyframes come to duplicate loop and what this is we can actually tell it how many times we want to loop so I want to loop for five times I don't want to loop for infinity so now I just need to move my screen so we can see it we've got those five loops with the five loops, I can select all and I can use the shape box. With the shape box, what I can do is we can change the time. I'm going to make this a little bit longer, so we come into about here. Now, because it's a bouncing ball, it's going to lose energy over time. And what we can do with the shape box is just grab this corner and we can bring this down here. So now the ball is going to lose energy over time. If it loses energy over time, it's also going to lose a little bit of speed. So we're going to reactivate the X. And we're going to put a curve on the X. What we're going to do is we're going to change the speed of the X. So I'm going to drag this up a little bit. As you can see, the ball will lose energy. And now 
When I select this, we have a bouncing ball that loses energy as well as height. And this is the power of the spline editor. This is actually a great example if you're doing karaoke. You can do a bouncing ball with karaoke with this. Super powerful and it's worth spending a little bit of time playing in. So that is today's video, the spline editor. Enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you next Sunday.